In BMW Motorrad's range, we find several GS models. Big one with 1,250 cubic centimeters, a middle one with 850 cubic centimeters, a small one with 310 cubic centimeters. And now we are going to present you a Nano GS. Calzone. with 125 cubic centimeters. Of course, this is not coming from BMW Motorrad. This is coming from a brand new brand, Motron. I think not too many of you really knowing what Motron is. This is a really old Italian brand. It was established in uh, 1961, so 50 years ago. Uh, and originally its name was Romeo and it was renamed to Motron in 1976 and it was producing in Modena small cubic capacity motorbikes and scooters and it was re really famous in uh, Italy in its time and it was finishing its working and production in 2000 and uh, uh, not too many years ago last year KSR Group which is an Austrian group bought the brand name and uh, let's say that uh, restarted its production of course the bikes are produced in China but they have a pretty nice range In the beginning year, so this year, uh, already 12 new models are coming from Motron between 125 and 400 cubic centimeters, so they are going to stay in the low mid uh, range. Uh, our main uh, review uh, subject is the Touring Enduro X Nord 125, but now let's check out another model, uh, the Revolver. 125 which is a totally different motorbike also the technical part is not the same because it has an air-cooled uh, engine but if we check it the outside let's say visibility of it is uh, pretty similar to uh, Harry Davidson model, which I think a lot of you are going to find out. So the fuel tanks form, the seat form, the whole front part, uh, although the mudguard is not short enough, like we can say, uh, the spoken wheels and everything else is really looking like Harley Davidson Sportster. Anyhow, uh, this is really a fancy motorbike, uh, although it's of course a really cheap motorbike. Uh, but for those riders who are satisfied with this uh, not too much uh, brake horsepower, it's a very, very good uh, choice as well. But let's speak about our subject of uh, the review, the x 125 Touring, which is a touring enduro of the, let's say, old and new brand, the Motron. This is one of the first models and it's really an interesting motorbike, uh, especially from the side of the usability. Uh, let's check out what we get for our money, which is a pretty low uh, amount. We get a nice looking touring enduro, which uh, gives uh, all the all the let's say design elements which is necessary now in the 21st century for a bike in this uh, category of course uh, the bike itself is small the overall length is just over two meters and the wheelbase is much under uh, 140 centimeters and the small sizes of the Motron X Nord are very uh, useful when you have to ride in a big city traffic among the queues like this in a jam uh, I have the side cases of course on the bike as they are not really removable now as well and uh, this is no point to worry at all because uh, they are not wider than the handlebar or the crash bars so it's really 
easily possible to ride among uh, the cars. The only thing you have to take care of are the mirrors, in which it's really very, very fine to watch back, but uh, they are in the same height and pretty wide as the small vans mirrors, for example, here. Thank you very much. Uh, so you really have to take care not to hit the car's uh, mirrors with them. Otherwise, the usability in a big traffic, uh, the small Motron, is also totally fine. And the engine capacity is also pretty small, 125 cubic centimeters, so it's really an entry touring enduro uh, model, but it gets all those things which is necessary or which are necessary for the usability of a bike, bike like this. So if you want to travel long distances uh, far away from your uh, basic place, then this bike really, except of the high speed, knows everything which is necessary. For example, it has a pretty good wind protection, we are going to speak about it later. A pretty comfortable uh, seat position, we are going to speak about later. Um, all the all the necessary things which, which are really important when you, for example, leave the civilization, a very big and very massive uh, crash bar. Uh, all the cases, side cases and the top case as well. So everything is ready that you go far away. We will speak about a lot of things in the second part of the review. Let's start with the suspension, uh, about which we really do not know too much technical things. In the front we have upside down telescopic forks, uh, let's say with normal six, uh, normal width uh, and I think some hundred and 40-50 millimeters can be the travel of it and in the rear part we have a central suspension unit and the whole suspension is working so well that uh, it's not only on paved roads but uh, very poor quality paved roads and even in among light off-road conditions the XNord 125 Touring is absolutely well usable. <laughs> If once the bike is a touring enduro, we have to test it uh, among off-road conditions. Uh, this is a not too good quality uh, road and a lot of places are washed out with the water and I'm just going to cross one of it. But it's really funny that uh, this really weak and uh, not too heavy small touring enduro is absolutely taking these kinds of uh, let's say adventures very very easily even with my 100 kilo body weight when i'm sitting on the bike the suspension is absolutely moving out all these up and downs and without any heating any problem uh, it's very 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 easy to ride with it even for those who are absolutely beginners riding off-road although the x nord itself is not a big motorbike uh, at least the body of it but the seat position uh, on the top of it it's extremely comfortable really surprising uh, even the knee angle with my 190 centimeter height the knee angle is extremely uh, big uh, the whole seat position, especially with the pretty high positioned handlebar, it's uh, so for the whole body, it's, it's such a relaxed and comfortable uh, position that really you never imagine without sitting on the bike. And let's check out not only with 190 but 170 centimeters how the seat position is looking like. Uh, Dorka is showing us that uh, just have a look at it, everything is absolutely perfect. So the, the knee angle is of course much much better than mine and all the upper body position and everything is good. And when she puts down her uh, legs on the tarmac then the uh, keeping is absolutely perfect. So with 170 centimeters on the top. Of course with a body like mine, 190 centimeters, it's not easy to stand up on a small bike like this, but not, absolutely not impossible. So when I stand up, because of some bigger bumps on the, on the off-road uh, area, the bike is absolutely well and easily rideable even among conditions like this. Wow! Uh, to lose the control with the street tire in a mud like this, this is not a real shame, but in this case I didn't lose it. But anyhow, I'm, I'm really wondering how the crash bars are doing their job, so let's check it out. 
first from the right side well not even the brake pedal and not even the downest part of the side case reached the tarmac nothing although the wheels are deeper now than uh, the side of it and then let's check the other side as well if once we did it it's very easy to lift it up that's also an advantage of a small bike and if i let it fall to the left side then the situation is just the same so not even the uh, brake lever uh, gear the gear changer sorry uh, can damage nothing so this is really we can say a safe traveling vehicle And the small sizes of the bike is also a big advantage when you have to ride on very narrow off-road sections, for example, like this. It's very easy to maneuver with it. And the lightweight is also a big advantage when you have to turn around, for example. You can feel that, although I am pushing it now up ways, but with moving a little bit on the front part of the bike, it's really easy job to turn around with let's say uh, seven or eight hundred cubic centimeters touring enduro it would be a much much harder task this was a totally bad place to turn around but i could do it really easily and without big physical investment and i am out from the forest Let's speak a few words about the engine itself. Uh, although it's a totally basic thing, it's a 125 cubic centimeter uh, liquid cooled and of, co of course uh, injected uh, petrol engine. The max power is approximately 12.5 uh, brake horsepower, 9.3 kilowatts, and the maximum torque is also under 10 uh, Newton meters. So the engine power uh, with the six speed gearbox, this is a red point for uh, Motron that they gave a, a six speed gearbox, which is pretty well rated. So, all in all, this is enough power side for those riders who are not, let's say, uh, in love with the speed. And now let's check out what this uh, not too powerful one cylinder Chinese engine is enough for moving the small touring enduro. There are two possibilities. The number one is when you are just cruising, although it's a touring enduro, now we are cruising. Then you are not pulling too much throttle, very easy and very uh, nice to ch change the gears even without clutch. And then you can accelerate and just watch the territory and uh, everything and the cities and everything around you. The other possibility is when you have to hurry, I am going to start again on this empty public road. So when you have to hurry, then you have to pull a full throttle and always change the gears when uh, the RPM is up to the maximum. And then you, you do not even have to close the throttle for a moment. And then the acceleration is enough for uh, taking part even in a little bit more dynamic public road, let's say in an outside city or something like this. The only exception is uh, from fifth to sixth gear because uh, then I cannot reach the maximum RPM and I have to close the throttle for a moment. And what is also a big, big advantage of this light uh, touring enduro is when you arrive to a curve, then you can take the curves and all the curves really easily and comfortably like if you are playing. And with this amount of power, what you really have to take care of all the time is the momentum. For example, uphills like this, this is not a big uphill at all. But here I can go up only in fifth gear with a maximum throttle. If I gear up to number six, the speed is starting to reduce and fall down immediately. So we always have to take care about to change the gear back in time and uh, take as much speed going downhill as just you can. And then you can ride relatively fluently with this uh, weak touring enduro. For the brake system, we could say that it's not really worth to speak about it, but uh, anyhow, let's mention what we have as a brake. Uh, we have two uh, brake discs uh, in the front and in the rear, of course, and uh, as in the case of the Chinese uh, manufacturers, uh, it's typical nowadays we 
do not have uh, ABS system, but we have a combined brake system, which is working on a way that uh, the hand brake, so the front brake lever, is uh, acting only here, so uh, one of the pistons of the front brake. Uh, and uh, the other tube is coming from the brake pedal, so uh, the rear brakes pedal is acting on the front brake uh, as well and to the rear one too. And what is really worth to mention anyhow in the case of this bike is that the dosability of the whole brake system, even on uh, unpaved road, uh, gravel and things like this, it's so fine and so, so really uh, working well that uh, it's uh, not a typical thing in this, cat in this category. Let's check out the dashboard of the bike for a moment. It's really, uh, we can say that this is really a full thing. We have an RPM counter, we can see the amount of fuel we have uh, aboard and we can always uh, see the current speed. We have a gear indicator, I show you this is number six. Five, four, and things like this. Uh, trip computer, of course, we do not have even have an overall kilometer counter and the daily one. And uh, we can uh, change the color of this small display to blue or to red, depending on uh, what kind of uh, what kind of day we uh, we have or what we like uh, more. Uh, but anyhow, and of course, uh, it is showing the indicators to both directions, and we also have uh, an emergency indicator. So the knowledge of this, uh, this small dashboard, I think, is absolutely proper for this category or even more. Let's speak a few words about the wind protection of the bike. If this is a touring enduro, it's really an important thing to have some wind protection. When you are traveling several hundred kilometers a day, it's important. And when you are traveling hot and cold and everywhere. And the Motron has, the Motron touring enduro has a windshield, which is pretty big related to the sizes of the bike. And the efficiency is, of it is also not bad at all because it's pushing up the air up to my uh, face approximately, up to this line. And it's really uh, taking away all the cold and everything else. The only problem is that it is making some wind noise, some bubbling wind noise around the helmet. Not dramatic at all, but you have to take, uh, you have to calculate with it as well if you are the same way tall as I am. In the beginning of the review I mentioned that this bike is looking like a Nano GS and uh, now we are going to get the answer why I told this to you. Uh, if we check the boxes, the top case and the two side cases, just have a look at the form of the right side case and also have a look at this silencer and have a look at the top case from the outside part. So this is absolutely looking like the box of the, the as the vario cases of the bmw gs is of course they are not vario and smaller and uh, much much more simple from uh, every point but for the low price of the bike you get all the three boxes so let's check out what what they know uh, the top case is uh, all of the uh, cases are openable with the starting key of the bike which is a good thing which is not so good that uh, you always have to close it back and then you can pull out the key only. To the top case we can put a normal helmet very very easily even with this uh, small shield and all the cases get a cable which is fixing them in the opened position. So these are all nice things. Uh, if we check the right one we are going to see that uh, from the inside well, this is really small, but some things, some personal things of yours uh, have place and there is this uh, keeper inside. So when you open it, uh, your personal things are not going to fall out from it. And uh, how to remove the cases, you can see that not very easily. So we can say that they are totally fixed cases. Let's close it back and uh, Let's check the other side, the left side, which is uh, pretty much uh, bigger from the inside. You see that here, this is a much wider uh, thing, as we do not have silencer on the left side. So you can put a lot of uh, things of yours into this case if you go for a longer tour. And uh, just to check out if this bike is really good for a long tour or not, we got a short story that the first uh, Exnord uh, customer here in Hungary uh, bought his bike uh, 
a little bit more than one month ago and he already traveled from Hungary to Vladivostok and back and the bike is already over 17,000 kilometers so the bike with these boxes is really good for long journeys as well at the end of the review let's check out who is this bike good for so who are going to be the satisfied customers of the motron x nord 125 touring model i think all of those riders who want to go let's say far away so for long journeys so even or or even for long journeys uh, especially for example to the east where there are not too many uh, service points uh, because this bike is going to be repairable i think after several years and several uh, thousands of kilometers even in the smallest city of siberia or china or anywhere in the world because the technical part is really simple from the other part it's also good for long journeys uh, from the point that we have 14 liters of fuel and the uh, consumption is not really going to go above uh, three liters so for all of those riders who are not uh, uh, let's say fanatics of speed i have already mentioned it uh, earlier who are satisfied with the maximum 100 uh, kilometers per hour and much much more than 90 kilometers per hour traveling speed who are not uh, having a problem because of gearing down a few when they have to go uphill and then they are going to go uphill a little bit slower or all of those riders who have dry, uh, riders license only for the 125 cubic centimeter category so lots of people can be satisfied with this uh, small bike especially as it has a really really good price if you liked our review please push a thumb up on it in the description under the review you can find the link where you can donate our work and of course if you haven't done it yet subscribe for our channel and please watch our previous contents as well and thanks a lot for your kind attention bye bye